I'm so excited to be talking to you because you have so many things going on currently. Yes. Um, you are booked and busy. So I really wanted to talk about you hosting HBO Max's Roller Jam. Yes, 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 yes. What do you want to know? Yeah. So how did you feel stepping into the role of host, especially for a reality competition show that, and you know better than anyone, like a show like that can change your life. So yeah. Yeah, how did it feel stepping into the role of a host? It was really fun, actually. Honestly, this was one of like the most fun jobs I've ever had. I got to play dress up every day. And then I just got to watch people that are really good at their craft compete and do incredible things on wheels, which is nuts. Um, but I, I've always wanted to host. I thought it would be really fun. I was inspired by Ryan when I was on Idol. I would watch him and see how he would interact. And, you know, he really, obviously he's done it for so long. He really knows how to keep things going. And um, I would look at him and go, you know, that, that looks like fun. I feel like I would love that. And I also really love words. So give me a teleprompter and I'm like the happiest person in the world. <laughs> So, so that works out for me, but um, I really wanted to kind of step into this 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 role, and I've been able to host a couple red carpets and done some charity events, but nothing like this. So it's been really fun and also a, a lovely learning curve for me. You don't get very many firsts, I guess, as your career kind of is longer and more lengthy, and so it's really fun to be able to be trying something new, something that's fun and, and easy, but it's also challenging at the same time. I had no idea the amount of energy that you have to keep up the entire time, because not only am I representing myself, I'm representing, I'm talking and, and representing the contestants and the judges and the people at home and the audience in there. So there's a lot of different points of energy going out, um, but I really had fun. And also because I was on a competition show, it was, uh, it was a nice little extra piece to be able to to bring in to be there with the contestants be like i've been in your shoes before i understand this feeling and if they didn't make it like you know no isn't the end of the road for you it's just whatever this is for the moment um, but also just to be able to encourage them and kind of walk them through the mental and emotional piece of their journey as well yeah i mean exactly because you know roller jump is all about the high energy competition yes. and fun yes. but then mm -hmm. you have to balance being this guiding presence for the contestants while also maintaining like you were saying that electric atmosphere and energy so how did you combine the two girl i'm grateful <laughs> that i have a six-year-old because i was like i gotta keep him entertained all the time <laughs> So I definitely took that part of being a mom and, and bringing that because your energy has to be up. It doesn't matter if you're not feeling good or not. You have to have that energy. Um, and then just, I mean, obviously, I have a very hard time talking. Can't you tell? <laughs> I think I think it's kind of it's kind of natural for me to kind of sit into that role just because I, I love people. I feel like as a singer and a performer and entertainer, I think this would be much harder if I didn't like people, but I love people. I love getting to know people's stories. And I also love being around people who are really, really good at what they do and passionate about what they do, no matter what it is. It could be putting paint on a wall. If they are <laughs> passionate about it, I want to be around them and, and watch. Cause you can just learn so much from that. So for me, it's really exciting to be able to have that again because I love my music but sometimes you can fall not fall out of well yeah I guess you can fall out of love things sometimes you know it's cyclical but um to be on the show has been really cool to see other people's passion and it's really like reignited mine for what I do as well I love that well I have to ask can you skate and if not <laughs> have you been inspired to learn I put on a pair of skates when I was in LA <laughs> I think last <laughs> week I did put on a pair of skates I didn't fall. I'm glory, grateful that I didn't fall, but I do need some more practice. That's for sure. I remember skating as a kid, you know, roller skating parties at the rink and field trips and weekends with my friends. And it's one of those things that I think you don't really think about stopping. It just kind of naturally does. I mean, I don't, for me, it feels that way. Cause I was like, I don't remember ever being like, I'm never skating again. You know what I mean? It was just something that I just kind of gradually stopped doing. Um, but I'm I'm very, very excited. I was very much inspired, which is why I put on some skates last week. <laughs> but um, I'm even more excited now though. I was already planning on doing this. I wanted to get my son some skates for Christmas and we watched the first episode and I think maybe two performances in, he was like, mommy, I want some skates. Will you get me some skates? And I was like, 
Yes. So I'm going to take him and then I'll be out there on the wall relearning how to do it again. <laughs> so I'm, I'm excited. Okay. So I have to ask, what's your go-to roller jam song? girl probably oh you know what i when i was on the show um i saw a couple of different performances and i thought that queen of the night by mm -hmm. whitney would be a great song to skate to so i'm hoping once i once i feel a little bit more confident on the skates that i'll, I'll be able to blast that and do some really cool moves okay well i have to <laughs> hype you for a moment because i feel like your new song uh, more than enough from the, your new album, No Restrictions, is definitely a perfect yes. Roller Jam song. It's so fun and upbeat. Um, I think that that's perfect. So, which leads me into this new album that I love. It has gone platinum in this household. Um, yes. <laughs> it's it on repeat. <laughs> Thank you um, so, so much. Yeah. I have to ask you because I'm assuming it's every artist's you know goal to have their music withstand the test of time and your That's songs it. definitely have um and it's especially one step at a time it's being used yeah. in so many reels and tiktoks <laughs> yes. um you know i hear the the clicking of the heels and then the da da da, da. i can't sing yes. i cannot sing I um, instantly no <laughs> yes so how is it to hear this song come back around almost 20 years later in, in an unexpected way I know. Oh my gosh. It's so crazy because I feel like I feel like everything just happened for me yesterday. Like I still feel like it's brand new. I'm still just like, I can't believe I get to do this. But then at the same time, it's age, it feels like ages ago, like a whole lifetime ago, which essentially it has been. But um I'm appreciative of TikTok and all these social media platforms because it's really given so many artists, not just me, but so many artists, the ability to have their catalog from before kind of have a resurgence. And then these new generations are starting to get to know our songs for the first time again um, in kind of an or a way that's organic to them. So I love it. Every couple months, there's something with one step at a time. Every couple <laughs> months, there's something with no air. And I'm just sitting back like, Thank you. <laughs> you know, so I'm I'm very very grateful for that, and I and I love it. You know, that's all I want to do. I singing is it. I just want to sing. This fame part, I could definitely leave it. I don't need it. I don't need somebody to get another picture of me again. I would be okay if that didn't happen. But I just know that I'm supposed to be here to tell stories and to bring joy to people and to help people heal and to help people feel something, and to hear that my song has been a part of you know, the fabric of some people's lives for so long and has helped encourage them or, um, you know, get them through something like that's what I want to do. So it makes me so happy that now there's new people that are getting to hear the music and hopefully they'll get to take those songs with them as well. Oh, I love that. And yes, yeah, so I was like, I was saying, I want to get into this new album because when yes. I heard the title, No Restrictions, I was like, oh, this sounds empowering. <laughs> so yes. what inspired this new album? And how does it reflect where you are in your life right now, both personally and musically? Yes. Yeah, so No Restrictions is a song that's also on the album. And through all the iterations and versions of the album, that song was a constant. So it kind of started with that, like knowing, oh, this song, I definitely want to be on here. And then I started really trying to figure out a title and think about where I am in my life and all of these different things. And then finally, I kind of looked at the song and was like, No Restrictions. That <laughs> makes sense so you're right right now in my life i feel like i'm in this space where i've really stepped into my power as a woman as a friend as a mother as a wife as a human like i just feel like i'm in this really amazing space and i'm i'm free of you know other people's opinions of me and old outdated beliefs and ideals and even things that i thought about myself or habits or things that i've that i've done for however long it's been like kind of shedding those things so i feel very free in this moment and then in terms of the music it reflects in that as well um everybody met me on idol singing different genres every week so i can sing everything <laughs> and i thought why don't i just sing everything and i i there's a freedom in that as well because as artists a lot of times, maybe not all the time, but a lot of times we're told, here's the box that you're in and that is where you stay and that you can go up to the corner, but don't go past that corner, you know? So I really wanted to, with this new project, show all those versions of me. So 
American Idol to my first album to Broadway to all the little things that I've done. All those genres are in this album. So you've got pop, you've got dance, you've got uh, an, a you've got a little bit of country, southern gospel, you've got soul, you have uh, acoustic songs, you got a ballad, I've yeah. got features. So it's a little bit. There's a mood for everybody. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I've I've really enjoyed being in that space and also just the freedom to create in that way. That was really beautiful as well. I'd, I had a hundred percent pure creative control for this Ooh. album and i also really think that it shows in the music as well because i just i wasn't really thinking about what was trending or uh you know things like that i just was like i just want to make good music and i think that's where we kind of this is a whole other conversation but i feel like as a music industry we got to like take a little skirt skirt and go back to that um not that we don't need like the fun stuff but i really think that music is so beautifully complex and we've kind of lost a little bit of that so i think if we we could come back to that i think it would be great yes let's give you all the control all the time because <laughs> if this is the product i uh i love it you know i really really do thank you, um, thank you. and i've been following your journey since you were 17. It just sounds so crazy because you're also still so young. So it yeah. seems like not to have to be like, yeah, like almost 20 years ago. When, like, no, truly. Yeah, it's insane. It's, it's, it's there. It's close. <laughs> we are we are rapidly approaching the 20 year mark, which is insane to me. But like I said, it still feels really new and fresh. But at the same time, like, wow, I can't believe that I did that. And like, this is my life. So I have that like moment of multiple times a day where I'm like, I get to do this. Like, it's just so beautiful. Gratitude is the attitude always. All right. So I have to ask, do you have any favorite tracks on the album that you were like, especially excited for fans to hear? Yes. Well, girl, all of them for one. <laughs> um, it took, it took almost a year to narrow it down to the 15 songs. We were stuck at like 25 songs for a good minute. Um, but I feel like all of them have, there's something about all of them but i think for right now and this time and the world and how crazy things have been i definitely think that give love a try is a song that i hope people will listen to and and really absorb the message because you know as an artist music is a really powerful tool especially to like drive home messages that are important or things that you really want people to to remember so that's one of those songs that I think can do that. If you listen to it, you close your eyes, you'll really be able to absorb it. And we need it now more than ever. We need love more than ever. So I think that one is a special one. If you listen to any song today, <laughs> please listen to all of them. But if it's today, do <laughs> give love a try. Um, and I also, I guess that kind of leads me into the reason why we're talking today. I have a really cool campaign that I'm a part of called Cause for Alarm. And they have their own living jingle that helps kids understand fire safety. And there's a lyric in there that goes, um, if you hear beeps that last, you know it's time to get out fast. And I remember as a kid, there's a whole bunch of songs that I learned to help me learn. And I still remember them. And so for me right now with our family, DJ is six years old. So we're really into that, like safety at school, safety with your friends, safety at home. And uh, when this kind of came across my desk, it made perfect sense because even I, I don't really think about it. We don't really think about fires happening in our homes because it could happen at any point some faulty electric or a candle left on it could be anything so for me it's really helped open my eyes as well like oh i really got to get this together <laughs> but it's been it's been really fun and i'm starting to learn the song so that now i can teach it to dj and then he can learn the song but it's been it's been incredible to see all the research the statistics all of those different things but um i think what really hit me the most was on kidda's official youtube page there there are some survivors, some younger kids that they tell their stories and their testimonials of going through those things and watching those really, for lack of a better term, lit a fire under my behind because I was like, yeah. I got to get this. This is very important and it's better to be safe than sorry, you know? Yeah, I mean, I feel like fire and safety isn't always an easy conversation to have. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't know, in your experience, how would you encourage parents to start discussing discussing fire safety with their children in like an approachable way, you know, not to scare them, yeah, but also yeah. make an impact? I, somebody had asked me this um, earlier and I, I really appreciate that 
question because I feel like we just think that kids the kids do absorb everything, but sometimes they can't comprehend the ways that we say them, and especially if they haven't experienced something. So something I've been trying to do with DJ, um, even before this kind of came across my desk, was you know, we're watching a movie or we're out at the park or, you know, we see something and I try and ask him, like, you see what happened or do you see what's going on? What would you do in this situation? How would you feel in this situation? So it's kind of it's it's talking to them, but bringing it in a in an experiential way where he can look at it and go, hmm, I don't know what 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 would I do? Um, or, for example, he was at the park the other day and there were like these climbing rocks on the outside and he walked on them and then he got stuck. And another kid was like, I'm going to jump. And I looked at DJ and he looked at me like he was asking permission. I said, well, what's your what's your plan? How do you how do you think you can get down from here? here do you think it's safe to jump do you think you should do something else and it was really cool I was right there so if he needed me I was there but watching kind of the wheels turn and him figure out how he was going to get out of this situation and he retraced his steps and like went back up onto the top um but you know just kind of doing it in things like in in ways like that I think I found have really helped I also have talked to DJ a lot since he was younger like not necessarily as an adult like you're going to listen to this now <laughs> but speaking to him kind of how I'm speaking to you, like everyday conversations and with kids, you know, repetition is always the best thing. You can start super, super young, um, you know, by the time they start speaking even or even before that, because they're they just absorb everything. Um, so I think that those are the few things. Music, definitely to drive home the message. Repetition, because then they'll remember if they don't remember all the details, they'll at least remember those key moments and then kind of in an experiential way where he can look at something and go or they can look at something and go, oh, I've never thought about that or and then it leads into a, a bigger, deeper discussion. So, I mean, you could try the whole scare it out of them, but I, I don't know <laughs> if that's really the best. I don't know if that's really the best way. But um, yeah, I think those three have been really cool for and useful for me and, and my family so far. Oh, those are super, super helpful, especially a song. I remember like every song I've ever learned from elementary school. So yes, <laughs> me too. <laughs> Oh, so well, made, Jordan made so much sense. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no, come on. Um, and I was going to say, I don't want to come too much your time. So I just have one last and random question. Sure. But your birthday okay. is coming up soon. So I just wanted yes. to know if you have any plans. Girl, I have not even <laughs> thought about it, to be honest. Like, it is coming up. I'm like, oh, it's only a couple months away because December yeah. is always so far from the start of the year. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I don't really have any plans. Probably sleep. I just want to, <laughs> I just need some sleep. Um, but I, I'm not sure. I kind of did a, did I do a party last year? I kind of did like a album or a song, like a single release slash birthday party type of thing last year. But I don't know. I, I think now at this point in my life, because I do so many like big events and things like that, like on, on days like that, I'm just like, I just want to chill. <laughs> I just want to chill. That's but a present. Husband, right. My husband is a little bit different, though. He's going to be like, no, we need to celebrate you and do all these things. So all the things that I have done for my birthday, my husband has put together for me because I'm just like, good. <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, but I, I think if I could ask for anything, I would ask for a miniature cow. I know that's oh. random. They're so cute. Cute. They're so cute. <laughs> I know it's so random, but yeah, somebody give it's me a unique. It's unique. It's unique. Send one over. Yeah, send one over. Oh I'll be my the happiest gosh. girl in the world. <laughs> I hope your husband's listening. Like, we need to know. Cow. He's like downstairs. I'm like a miniature cow. But yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, Jordan, thank you so much for your time. I'm so happy for you. This is so many like amazing new beginnings um, and continuations yeah. as well. So congratulations and thank you. Thank you. No, thank you so much, Paris. And thank you for listening to the album. That means more to me yeah. than you'll ever know. Thank you yeah. so much.